welcome to Sister Power. I am Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. I am so excited, so excited that Queen's here in the studio or at home virtually. You know, the world of pageantry has inspired so many men and women to believe in yourself, to love yourself, to engage, share, and connect with your community nationally and internationally. Today, our sister power guest, Andrea Nicole Sledge, executive director of the All National World Beauties and Man of Distinction pageant, and Samantha Alexis Richardson, executive director, California All World Beauties and Man of Distinction pageant. Ladies, queens, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you so much for having us, Sharon. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for being here. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that I just had a nice conversation with uh, Andrea and we have a, a, a blessing that she just got over on COVID. So we're so happy that we have her here on our show today. It, on Sunday, January 30th, Wake Forest alumna and former Miss USA, Chelsea Chris passed away by committing suicide. Chris' death was an unimaginable tragedy that re rippled through the community. And I am so sure it rippled through the pageant. And so, Samantha, I, you know, what, give me your thoughts on the loss of this beautiful, talented woman. She was an attorney as well. Talk to us. Well, you know, when I first found out about it, I, I was in disbelief, of course, just like the rest of the world, because you look at this beautiful woman, uh, talented, uh, educated, like you said, a lawyer, and people think that, wow, that, that shouldn't happen to her, or there's because she's all those things that she's in, invincible. Like she's a human being that can go through human things. And unfortunately, uh, no one knew. But the thing is, is that it just lets you know that everybody goes through something you don't know. A person can look totally normal to you and be going through a lot. They could have the weight of the world on them and you would never know about it because they always cover it up with a smile or just regular conversation that makes you think, okay, they're okay. But sometimes, you, like I said before, you just don't know. You don't know. Well, Andrea, you know, you've been in this business for a while. Give us your thoughts. So, Chesley, like, the mo like a lot of us, have this so here's the thing, in pageantry, you carry a lot. Um, you know, you're always expected to be super poised, super put together. Um, there are some facets of pageantry that people feel that we are superhuman against, and that's not true. You know, there is a lot put on us to perform. And with everything else that was on her plate, with her going from being part of the Miss USA system, you know, she was actually working for the system, her working with extra, you know, still, you know, practicing attorney. She was also back in school. There was just a lot on her plate and a lot going on. But one of the main things that I always tell people and want them to know is that it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to constantly camouflage it with a smile when you know deep down inside you are screaming for help. You know, reach out, get the help that it is that you need. You know, one thing about the National World Beauties pageant, we are here for one another. You know, I may be their executive director, but they know that they can call my phone at any hour. And I am always there for them mm -hmm. because we are a family. And I truly, truly believe in that. You know, her loss of life to, to pageantry and to all of us and, and what she meant to so many of us, some that have met her, some that have not but her being a part of the dynamic trio that broke so many barriers of being, you know, the first three, you know, where all of them were African-American, the, the queens of the larger systems at one time, you know, that legacy will live on forever. You know, I do hate 
you know, that her life, her beautiful life was cut short. We will constantly be in prayer for her family, for her mother. So I know that could be extremely hard for her, but it does send a resounding alarm to all of us that we don't have the strong friend. All of us need somebody at some point. And so we need to be cognizant and very aware of that. Yeah. Just ask people, are you okay? Right. Are you okay? That's good advice. Thank you. But Samantha, I'm going to come back to you. Tell us about some of your recent pageant titles, awards. Give us a quick snapshot <laughs> of your pageant Ow. titles and awards. I want to hear from both of you. Ooh, okay. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I have been in pageantry for a good, tell my age here, but about, about over about 30 years or so. I started in pageantry when I was about 12. So, and um, and that's me over there <laughs> winning last year. I, you know what? I have won a title of USA National Miss. That was 1997. And that was a title that was groundbreaking for an African-American woman to actually win that. And I was the first African-American woman to win that in my age group, the Miz, and we had a teen winner that was also African-American that year. So we we were groundbreaking and we want to go on the cover of Patchin' Life magazine. And so that was, you know, I feel like a pioneer, but there were so many before with the universal Miz system. I was national queen a, a few times, different divisions in that pageant. And that was in Las Vegas, uh, uh, California, Mrs. California plus America. 2015, I won that title. I came back as Mrs. Golden State. I've won uh, Miss Cosmopolitan. <laughs> I mean, I have a list. We'll be here for a minute, but you know what? The journey has been great. I took a hiatus out of pageantry for about 10 to 12 years because due to illness. I'm better now, but I had to, you know, leave that and my sons and take care of them as well. But when I came back, I was plus size. So I was in a whole different, uh, you know, age bracket for one, but also size. And so what I did, I embraced that. I embraced every curve I had. And somebody said, Sam, you need to get back into pageants. They have plus size pageants. So there I was on a brand new journey. I did plus America system before uh, All World Beauties. But, you know, I was looking for that particular system that the system that I could call home and when I found, I talked to Andrea, I'm gonna, this is how it happened. I spoke to Andrea at the pageant in Atlanta, 2018. And mm -hmm. she took the time to talk to me. And you know, I'm in the medical field. So I feel like if you have a good bedside manner, people to actually take the time to actually talk to you. And she did, even though she was the statistician for that pageant at that weekend, she took the time and talked to me about her system and told me that I could call her. And, and I did. And I checked into All World Beauties, did my research. And, you know, the pandemic hit us. We couldn't have our 20th anniversary then. So we came back in 2021. And history, here I am. I am the <laughs> National All World Beauties Royal Ambassador 2021. And I couldn't be uh, happier than I am now. And I just cherish my my system. I cherish my title, and I'm working it. Great, hey, <laughs> Andrea. Yes. Give us a quick snapshot of your pageant titles and awards. So I have over 26 um, state, national, and one international and lifetime titles. Um, so more recently. I competed in the All World Beauties pageant before I became the owner of the system. I am the inaugural Miss Ultimate Queen, which is their um, high point winner. Uh, so I was their inaugural Ultimate Queen in 2015, and then I took over the pageant in 2017. And so I have been the owner and director for All World Beauties since then. I am also the National All World Beauties Queen of Queens number four. Um, and those are the most recent pageant titles I have. And I'm actually getting ready to come out of retirement and I will compete one more time. I am the uh, classic uh, Miss Texas Regal Elegance, 2021-2022. Uh, <laughs> and I will be competing in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia in July. So I'm very, very excited uh, about that as well. 
Oh, I'm we excited. excited. For you. We're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Samantha, <laughs> how did you choose your platform? Oh, man. You know what? Everyone who knows me, they know I didn't choose my platform. My platform kind of chose me. I tell everybody I live my platform because I have two beautiful boys that represent my platform. My platform is autism awareness through education and personal experience because my twin boys have autism, <laughs> both of them. So I live my platform every single day. It didn't, I didn't choose it. It kind of chose me. God gave me something that I definitely can handle and I embrace it. I love them. I spread awareness with them and by taking them out, letting them embrace the world and not keep them, you know, in the house. A lot of people keep their kids closed away. And I've never done that. My sons, I even take took them on a muni bus. You know, we don't I have a car, of course, but I want them to experience life. So anything that I could do for them to experience life they have and that's what has made them the 20 year olds soon to be 21 year olds they are today they're very smart they knew how to read before they got in school and they started at age three that's when I noticed it and so I tell you the story that that's like that's a whole nother talk show whatever okay well we'll talk about, about that autism. another time well, well, I'm proud of you. Good for you. I mean, that that's it's called love. That's really what it's called. It's yes, called it love. It's love. So, Andrea, how mm -hmm. does women empowerment tie into pageantry? So, women empowerment tying into pageantry is extremely important because a, a woman should come or a man should come to your pageant and be strongly dedicated to the experience meaning they will leave different from whence they came. You know, with the National All World Beauties pageant, we believe wholeheartedly in equipping our kings and queens with everything that they need through our pillars of inner beauty, empowerment, and service to help them to go out and lead the charge of change that they want to see in their communities. And that's really what it's about. It's more than about wearing a sash and adorning a beautiful crown on your head. It really is about taking that opportunity and taking that moment for those doors that will be open to you for you to take and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I'm going to lay my footprint for other people to follow, for people to know that I was here. So like some of my queens, like Samantha and some others, you know, who are such champions, you know, for their platforms or for their communities and reaching out to the homeless and reaching out to other people. The reason why women empowerment is so important is because we should look to motivate one another and not compete with one another. That's what we should always do to look for. You know, we earn nothing by competing against each other, but we earn everything by joining together. We're more powerful in numbers. And so what we try to do with the National All World Beauties pageant, even though we're competing, is reach each other, teach each other, be there for our sister, let her know that she's beautiful, that regardless of what she needed or her why she came to compete in this experience, that she deserves to be here simply because she deserves to be here, period. I love that attitude. I do. Samantha, why did you choose All World Beauties pageant? Oh, wow. Okay, for one reason I, I did just, I'll reiterate on it too, was, well, Andrea was the first reason. Uh, years ago, I had a director who took me by the hand after going through so much negative adversity, being the minority in a lot of pageant systems where I, I didn't stop. I refused to give up. I don't use the word can't. And I kept going until I started learning and I started to win. I, I went through a lot. But after that, I met a woman who took me by the hand and she showed me what good pageantry was about. And she was uh, a Caucasian lady. Back then, that was a big deal mm -hmm. because of, you know, the time they thought that I was told that, oh, you can't do a pageant because you're, because you're uh, black. 
that's what I was actually told. And so, and I didn't believe that. So I kept going, but this lady took me by the hand and she taught me and her, and I stayed with her and learned pageantry from the ground up, traveled all over the United States. We, she did her all her own state pageant. So we traveled everywhere. And I was with her for about 14 years as her lifetime queen. I became her lifetime queen and I became her MC and um, did all the shows entertained. But back here. what I've learned there, I wanted to get back. And when I came back into pageantry, I was looking for that pageant that represented me. And when I learned of the pillars that the pageant was aligned with, inner beauty and empowerment and service, that, that was me all the way. That's who I am. That's how I've lived. And so meeting the executive director, just from talking to her, as you can see how she is here on this interview, that's what spoke to me. And I knew that I had to do her pageant. And when I got there, I tell you, the ultimate experience is one of the best experiences in the world. You are family. And that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a part of a family. And it was mainly, I have to say, it was mainly her. If I had to choose one thing, it was her <laughs> and how she treated me. Aww. And that's what I needed because that's how the lady, and I'll mention her name, Miss uh, LaGlinda Jatala, took me by the hand and she just, she was just there present. And that's what Andrea did for me in 2018. And I've never been happier to the point, you know, I don't even want to go anywhere. You know? Good. <laughs> but I love AWB. And you don't have to, you can stay, right? I'm going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrea, how important is it, is it that we are our sister's keeper? It's extremely important that we are our sister's keeper. Just like when we opened the show talking about Chesley Chris and what happened to her, you know, it's important that we truly, truly, truly seek to connect with our sisters. That way they feel that they have a safe place to share. That's why a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't share because they question the genuineness of, of the people that they're connected to sometimes or feel that maybe, you know, the people that they have in their life are very surface level. But if you are truly your sister's keeper, then your sister knows that they can reach out to you for anything and everything and be able to share with you and you won't make fun of them. You're able to actually listen to them, whatever it is that they're going through, whatever it is that they need and know that they have a safe place and safe space in you, both physically and mentally um, to be able to be there for them for whatever it is that they need. So that's why it is so important for us to be our sister's keeper. We are only as strong as our next sister. And if we are allowing our sister who we know is struggling to struggle, then we're not being a good steward of, of the time and the presence that we have here, you know, that God has given each and every one of us. You know, God requires us to be present and being our sister's keeper is being present. I love that. Amen. And, and, and you know, that, that's, that is a hallelujah moment. Yeah. And I, I hope that, you know, women especially who are listening to sister power they take that and walk away with it and hold it dearly because it is it's valuable it's very valuable so samantha where do you see yourself in five years oh wow well i, I see myself as being a successful uh, businesswoman i have a lot of um irons in the fire so that but i i see myself still being with the all world beauties organization growing <laughs> the state of california uh, all world beauties and man of distinction pageants i see myself being a part of helping others helping other women empower them in our mission the all world beauties uh mission we want to empower we want to instill just the the magic and the energy that we have into other people that's what i do with the, the ladies and the gentlemen you know we just want to instill that so in five years i just see myself elevated from what i am today i'm an entertainer so i see myself at the grammys look receiving my grammy let me not forget about that because i am mm -hmm. an entertainer <laughs> i am an entertainer and um that's a whole nother show too <laughs> at entertainment but you know i just see myself actually 
elevating this pageant system with Andrea to get it on a network television. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll see. We're going to see ourselves there in five years. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm loving this vision. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Andrea, mm -hmm. what has been your favorite element of competition? Mm. My favorite element of competition is interview. And the reason why that's my favorite is because it really gives, you know, the judges and myself a good scope into who you really are. You know, it lays down the, you know, the ground of, you know, the type of title holder that you're going to be. We figure out, you know, what your passions are, you know, where you've been, things you've been through, be able to share that you know, things that you've written down on your on your judges sheet and be able to expand upon that. All of the life challenges, you know, your entire journey that's gotten you to this moment, you know, things that we wouldn't normally know in casual conversation. So that is why I do love the interview because it really does give us time to divulge directly into the person and their passion and why they're here and why they want to be here. I absolutely love, love, love interview. That's my favorite. Mm -mm. And that's a hard one, too, because those questions are just at the spare of the moment, I'm sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. They are at the spare of the moment. Um, no one knows what's going to be asked <laughs> at I all. Just, look, I was and, not going to go there. <laughs> I know, exactly. Um, but, but one thing that I do love is that, you know, everybody answers their questions with grace and um you know go through the process and you know able to answer honestly which i do appreciate so yes but i do i i honestly love interview that's my favorite wow samantha tell she can't you tell she loves yeah, it. Tell, you can tell. Tell. <laughs> that's a great speaker <laughs> it's, it's samantha explain to our sister power viewers the three pillars the three pillars, okay, well, our three pillars are inner beauty, empowerment, and service. Inner beauty to me is being able to show your beauty, of course, your inner beauty, because with me, like I said, being the minority in pageantry years ago, um, I had to work and live from the inside out because no one was seeing that outside beauty. So I had to show them who I was on the inside to exert that beauty so they can see it. And with the more and more and more, I didn't give up and try, they saw it. They saw it because that's where it derives, right? Because you can be like, you can look like Halle Berry and be the most ugliest person so you have to be able to have that beautiful inner spirit and at all our beauties that's what we want all the queens and the kings to have now empowerment i say this you have to be able first you have to be able to empower yourself in order to empower others because if you don't feel empowered just by waking up you should right god wakes you up every day you should feel empowered about that and if that's happening to you and you are waking up you should be able to get out there in the world and empower somebody if if you just help somebody that could just be helping someone in the simplest way i helped the lady with her grocery bags today you know that's to me that's empowering her to see another woman because usually it's a man running out there to help here's a woman who you might not have thought helped you. So that's what I did or empower just by telling a woman, when I see a good looking lady that's looking good, I said, girl, you are wearing that dress. Girl, you are doing that. I've gotten a delegate by doing that to imagine just by saying that. Service, well, this pageant is so built on service. It is our duty to serve. You know, you should be able to not only serve yourself, but serve others. I have built my life around serving people. Even when I entertain, I'm serving them. You never know when someone needs to feel better just by the gift of song. And I serve and use my gift to, you know, the elderly people. So, you know, and I serve in that way too, but we are big on service, really big on service. You should be able to serve others and not just yourself. 
And those are all three of our pillars. <laughs> and they're all wonderful. So in closing, Andrea, what tips and advice would you offer men and women who are interested in competing in pageants? The tips that I would offer anybody who is considering competing in pageants, whether you are male or female, is just do it. You never know what opportunities could come from you competing in pageants or being involved in the pageant industry. And, and one thing I'll do is I'll share my small testimony really quick. When I first decided to compete in pageants back in 2008 as an adult, I wasn't really sure, you know, about what I wanted to do. But what I can say is that it has awarded me a lot of different opportunities. I have been on several national, international media outlets, CNN, MSNBC, um, and even to a point where NBC actually came out to follow me and do an actual mini documentary about me and my role in pageantry and the Juneteenth pageant. So you never know what could be on the other side of it. All you had to do was say yes and let God just do the rest. Just take the journey, just do it. The other thing that I would offer is perfect practice equals perfect performance. If, if there's anything that you want to or expect out of this experience, make it to yourself to give 100% all the time to whatever it is that you're doing, no matter how big or how, no matter how big or small, just make sure that you do that and that you totally devote to it. And the last thing I'll say is connect with your why you're doing something and that will keep you always motivated to keep pushing forward. So those are my tips that I would provide to anybody that wants to compete in pageantry. Oh, ladies, queens, thank you. You have motivated, empowered, and educated me. Thank you, thank you for your wisdom. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. <laughs>